Um, I d you know, actually, I can't recall. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think it would have been because I think Haas Haas was not the program just, director when I got there. Because Haas was in that 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 first wave when everybody switched. Haas was like right around that time. Yeah. Was, it seemed to or me. Or was it Chuck Finney? I think I think it, it, it might have been Chuck because I, I don't think Chuck. there was a program director at the at that time. From You're what I remember. Right. I yeah. got I got hired by Chuck, so that, that's why I think it was Chuck that probably hired Jeannie. I mean, I don't. Because we came right around the same time, right? 80, yeah, I, 80, think, I yeah. think it was Chuck, and then all the changes happened like immediately after I got yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was always fascinated how Chuck found the people that he found because it seemed like he just everybody he hired or you know was affiliated with, you know, were they were great. They were just awesome. Um, he knew. Um, he was a. How do I say this? Uh, he just had a, He had an ear for air checks. Wow. Huh. He did. I would sit there in in his office, and he put. He'd have an opening, and he'd put in a tape for two seconds and throw it out. That fuck that guy. <laughs> He's not any good. <laughs> so, that was that was also he, yes. I remember doing put, and, yes. And I got to compliment myself because he he talked at the Specs Howard conference once, and he used my air check as an example. Oh, He's like, nice. Get right to it, man. <laughs> got to get right to the good part. <laughs> but but yeah, he had a knack. He listened. To, he would just he go here. You want to record over this? <laughs> yes. Because I would do yeah. stuff on like good ninety minute cassettes, and you're like, whoa, yeah. I could air check with that. I well, I do that with Jim Richards. He would like hey, he would actually call me into his office. He goes, "Hey, I'm going to be listening to Air Checks. You want to come in?" I'd be like, "Yes." And it would he you know, if it went 10 seconds, yeah. he had like he had like two piles. He had the okay, the 10 seconds, I listened to 10 seconds. That was a 10 second pile. And then there was everything else. And that like you said it was like all these great cassette tapes, you know, metal and and uh all of that stuff. Yeah, it was it was but it was fascinating to watch and listen and just, you know, like within 10 seconds, you know, the, the good PDs would be like, nope, yep, nope, nope, you know. And then, of course, the the people that they found to come to Muskegon, that always surprised me, the people that came through. Um, and then also where they're at now. I just I just, I just just don't understand how it all funneled <laughs> kind of through well, that those stations and then, it, you know, where it went. The, the Goodrich had a reputation and people knew – like when I applied at Sunny, I knew that that station was good. I knew it was somewhere I wanted to be because oh, you I did? knew oh. I would learn. Okay. I would learn there. Like I was stuck, you know. Hmm. And wow. and it was a it was a jump backwards for me, but it was it was very smart. And Chuck was also very good at. Uh, I think he understood. And Jim was good at this too, understanding uh, uh, people who could work together, like understanding that chemistry. Yeah. You know, huh. like knowing who, you know, was a good person to work with. Like, you know, people who had good attitudes. And how did you? Character. How did you find out that that was a good company to work for? You're way out in San Diego. How do you? Where, where do you find? Where do you get that information from? Well, I, you know, I was from Michigan, so um, I kept in touch with radio people from. Okay. From Central, because I went to Central for okay. broadcasting school, and right. you know, I when I saw the ad in R and R, I actually applied. This actually can happen. You can apply for a job at R and R and actually get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I remember seeing them like, oh, I, I heard that was a good station, so I would call people up, you know, that I went to college with, and they're like, oh yeah, you want to go work for them because they're the same people on VIC. Of course, VIC had a huge reputation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, they. I just knew, you know, it'd be the perfect place for me to develop myself huh. a little bit. So, that is so that was so interesting that to know that that was actually you know that, that it was that way and I had no idea. That's fascinating. Wow. Yeah, but you knew VIC was a good station. Well, yeah, and I, and I, I you know, when I was in Lansing going to school and I started a part-time job at some CHR that tried to go against them and uh, and it went horribly wrong for that station. And then I, you know, as I list, all I did was listen to the stations in the markets that I was in and went, wow. I want to work on that radio station. And then I would go and apply and I would get a part-time job at this station. So I ended up getting a job, you know, at, at VIC and uh, I would just hang out. I drove the production director bananas because I just wanted to hang out and just be in the, be in the building. And I thought I better do something, but I had no concept of the company. It was just, Hey, that's the station that I liked. And that was the other thing too. I always worked on radio stations 
uh, except for one, that, that I actually like the music, which is, I think that's kind of rare. I don't know if that happens um, all the time, but um, I actually worked for a radio station that I liked, which which uh, I, that, that seemed pretty rare to me, and I, I was lucky in that way. And then always, it just always seemed like I impressed the right person at the right time because, you know, I got to Cincinnati because of Jim Richards. You right. know, that was that was just, you know, you just did your job and tried to do it as well as you could. It wasn't like I was brown nose, and it was just like, I just remember him calling me up and saying, hey, you know, would you like no, to think about it? Yeah, it's just recognizing talent. I think if people who recognize talent are, are just, they're, they're going to pull people who are good and who they know can do the job with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are I'm, depressing I'm, me now, man. Come on. What? <laughs> so you're, you're depressing me now. They never pulled me anywhere. Just, you know. <laughs> well, and, 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 and I always thought it was kind of weird. You know, I always thought it was kind of like, hey, it would be nice if, the you know, when, whenever this guy would move on. And you could tell, like, certain program directors that I've worked with, you could sort of tell that they were going places. And Jim seemed to be, for me, seemed to be one of those guys that you just, you know, he was friends with Randy Michaels, and then he started working for J-Corps. And you could just tell that that guy, he was he was going places. And it was like, man, it would sure be nice, you know, to get a phone call from that guy. But I never said anything to him. And then I would, you know, then you'd get a phone call and you'd be like, oh, okay, you know. And I remember he offered me a job to go to Knoxville and I turned it down and I felt like, man, I'm making a huge mistake. Um, But, you know, if you say no, I thought if you say no once, you'll never get a chance to say yes again. And uh, luckily it didn't it didn't work out that way. But um, that was. that was what was neat, neat about Sonny is that, you know, you could see where people, you know, you could tell people were going places. I, I just want to ask Jeannie a question. Before you started working at Sonny, what was your impression of it? Like, what was the impression of it when you were uh, not in radio and you heard it? Oh, I just thought it was the coolest. Um, I, I, I thought it was the coolest. And I, it was an honor to <laughs> to get the job because I just thought, wow, that would be just so cool if I could work in radio. Because I worked at a Christian TV station before that, and that was kind of a kind of the opposite. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I wanted to break <laughs> loose. <laughs> so, <laughs> wanted to uh, let your hair oh, down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I, you, brought, you brought up Knoxville. I, I just, you remember, uh, you drove a car down there to Knoxville yes. and I picked it up. Okay. Yes. Oh, I remember that. And I, yes. And I flew down there to pick it up and you guys were going, you and Jim were going out to some awards thing and you dropped me off at a bar. And then, <laughs> yeah. When I, when you came back to get me, I'd made friends with just about everybody in there. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ability to make drunk people my friends. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's a skill from my dad, I guess. I do remember that. I have no idea why why I agreed. I don't. Even, so it was your car. You were coming to pick up your car, right? Yeah, I had totaled my car in Baltimore. I got in a car wreck, and um, did I buy that car from you? I bought it. I I don't understand <laughs> where I got the car. From. I don't eat. I what kind of? I don't. Do you remember what kind of car it was? Yeah, it was a Buick. <laughs> A Buick. Yeah, it was a, sh- a piece of shit Buick that I bought. I don't know. <laughs> Did I what buy that piece of shit from you? Come on. Yeah, well, I, no, I, had, I don't. I had I don't a Buick. Who, who I bought it off of? But you drove it down there. Yeah, I remember and I that. Picked it up, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and for some reason, Jim was. I don't know. I don't know if Jim and I rode together the whole way down, or if I drove it there and. You know, I probably bought it off somebody I knew in in Muskegon before I left. <laughs> Like okay. I, I needed a car and I knew the guy might have had one for sale, so it might have been something like Didn't that. Didn't you also you buy were, like you at the time? Mike Rich's car or truck one time too, or oh, something? Oh, I bought Mike Rich's truck. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I and lived at jo- I, I, and I lived in JoJo's duplex for a for a while. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. So that's probably why you drove it down. Then were you still living in that duplex? Uh, maybe, or you know what? When we when we bought a house, it was just right around the corner from the duplex. Okay, so that was a that was a good area. It well, yes, yes, and the house we ended up buying, I ended up making, I ended up making some money on that thing. There was like a big f- fight; these two people were fighting it out, and we ended up making ten grand more off of what we uh, we asked for it. Uh, and we only lived in that that house for for ten months, but that duplex was pretty cool too. I I can't remember how we I remember I had an apartment 
and then I was looking for a place, and I don't know, I don't know. Well, I, I'll tell you what happened. I was living in a duplex, and then renting out the other half. We okay. bought it. Me, me and my wife at the time right. had bought it, and then we bought a house in Grand Haven. A sweet so, house, if I remember right. right? Yeah, and so even, we were re- yeah. rehabbing this old house. We gutted it down to yep. nothing and then rebuilt it, and then I just needed somebody to live in my half of the, the duplex. Yeah. So you, you were looking for a place, and you went in there. Okay, God, I, that's so it's so odd. Yeah, because that was that worked out great. Had a little garage, and it was just a nice little place and a, and a basement. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was it was cool. It was awesome. The only problem was the the basement flooded all the time. That was the only problem. <laughs> you know, it only flooded once when I was there. Yeah. Um. And uh, but you know, it, it's <laughs> just keep everything just two inches off the ground, and you're fine. You know, it was awesome. not the landlord's fault. No. <laughs> no. And I don't remember. I don't remember ever, ever. You know, I remember because it flooded once, and I don't remember ever being like, you know, PO'd or no. anything. I just because I think you you were up front with it. You're like, hey, listen, this thing's gonna flood, and yeah. which I which I totally didn't get because I mean that thing's sitting in sand. I don't understand how it how it could it flood. The, the way it, the drainage was set up, and we had a sump pump that would that would drain it out, but sometimes it wouldn't work. And yeah, was, I'm glad we got rid of that property. Believe yeah. me. Let's continue more with sump pump. Um, uh, talk now. <laughs> how how long continue. has it been since you two have talked? Just out of curiosity. When, when Jojo that? came, you were in Cincinnati. What was it? You stopped by. We went to dinner somewhere here yeah, in Warren, we Morrisburg, dinner. Indiana. Um, yeah, a friend was... of my wife's. Uh, the, the, my my two oldest daughters went to daycare with these two kids who, so they became really good friends. And then he was a Lutheran minister and moved to just north of there in the Hamilton County, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Is there a Hamilton, yeah. Ohio? There's a Hamilton County, Ohio. That's Cincinnati is actually in Hamilton County. Yeah. yeah so we were there and I thought I'd call you up and we, we, we yeah. got together. Yeah. And so I saw, I don't, that was, I don't know how long ago that was, 10, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And that was, that was, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm out of this marriage now, so I can tell. I can speak honestly. My <laughs> wife never liked, never liked any of my radio friends. Oh ever. no, no, of course not. Wow. So she wouldn't go. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go meet this guy. You know him. Come on. And she's like, Nah, I don't feel like it. I'm like, Well, oh, thanks. How could she not like me? <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie, what I about what about like you? When me, it, when's the last time you talked to these guys? Me and you were so <laughs> 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 Can't take it personal. <laughs> How long is the message you talk to him, Jeannie? Talk to who? To, to Joe and Ranger Bob. Oh Mark. gosh, um, hopefully um, since I left the yeah, station. Wow, really? 20, it's, it's been twenty-four yeah. years since I talked with Jeannie. Wow, we definitely need to get a reunion thing going here. So when yeah. he's this, yeah, this that would date me. I would, I would state my age then if I said the years. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you 90, know what? Was ninety-six. <laughs> yeah, with good friends, it's like you can pick up. Uh, even though you haven't talked in 26 years or whatever, you know. So, yeah. Jeannie, do you, did you come to Bobstock? I don't was think that, she, uh, I don't I don't think she she was there. Okay. This year? No, that was God. When was that? That was that was an unbelievable get together of former Goodrich folks from all over. Who was the one at um, in Grand Haven at the was, bar? Um, was it Tim Bill Helsing? Bar? It was at Tim's Helsing's house. The Bob the the first one. Yeah, but we did meet at we did meet at the Billmar for an afternoon, I think. Oh, and then yeah. We, okay. and then it just carried I have over photos from that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have there's, to resurrect. See those there's now. a lot. There's a lot of stories in that Bob stock. That's a whole nother interview. Um, that was <laughs> wow. That was yeah. But could you legally do it? I mean, by he Bob's is still <laughs> still around, so I don't know if you can hey, legally do that. But anyway, Bob, I got to tell you guys this: when I first moved back to, so I've been. It'll be seven years this March that I came back to West Michigan. Wow. And the first night I was back, Ron uh, Buckner, who used to be my producer, got a hold of me. He goes, I got tickets to the Griffins game. Do you want to go to the game? So I said, sure. We're going to meet at this bar. So I park on Division, and this guy comes up to me. He goes, will you sign my petition? I said, what's it for? He goes, uh, it's for Bob Goodrich to get on the ballot for senator. And I'm like, oh, I'll sign that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to work for him. The guy's going, really? I'm like, yeah, I used to work for him. I'll sign that. I want to see that guy in elected office. <laughs> I, I I can't believe he's still alive. He is. I, and he 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 um has uh three I believe FM sticks left, and they all um broadcast very liberal talk radio here in Grand wow. Rapids, which is unheard of. He has no more no more 
theaters though, right? The theaters are gone or? He just sold the theaters recently. Yeah. Well, oh, they okay. went bankrupt. They went oh, bankrupt. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right after COVID hit, they went bankrupt and he got he got rid of them. They've, they've been selling those off piece by piece. Hmm. I thought he, he I thought he was 60 years old back back in 96. I thought he was. He, he's hmm. 80 now. Wow. He's 82. 82. Holy smokes. Everybody's got a Bob Goodrich story. Do you have one, um, Joe? Oh, I have several. <laughs> <laughs> that was an open question. Uh-huh. Uh, where do I start with Bob? Um, I tell you, for, for, why you think of it, let me, Bob Goodrich, for, for all the, you know, all the grief, you know, that we talk about with him uh, from a, from an owner standpoint, I remember when oh, yeah. I first got it, when I first got a job there, I mean, the benefits package was amazing. Um, you know, we weren't making a whole lot of money, but you know, a hundred percent of benefits, I don't remember paying anything for, for nothing when it came to like, you know, dental or healthcare or anything like that. And that was just so unheard of. And then of course, you know, he actually hired some really good people to kind of manage the radio stations uh, for him. So you know, it, it wasn't until he got involved directly with the radio stations that I remember uh, everything going kind of haywire. And then, of course, he would just come in and do his normal uh, Bobisms and, and things of that sort. I got a story where he was I was working at VIC one night and somebody came to the door and wanted to wanted to come in. And I had no idea who it was. I didn't even know who Bob Goodrich was. I didn't know he was the owner or nothing. And I wouldn't let him in. And uh <laughs> He ended up getting he ended up getting really really mad and he ended up calling somebody I don't know who it was and I ended up getting a phone call in the studio saying, um, "Hey, there's a guy outside your door." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm not letting him in." No, you need to let that guy in. He is the owner of the radio station. Oh my God! So I let him in and of course I just you know I just I just apologized profusely. Um, he was not thrilled though. I was that was my first my first Bob uh, <laughs> Bob meeting. He just showed up out of the blue. Didn't say anything. No, he was. Uh, it was weird because when I interviewed with Finney, he was there that weekend. Mm. So I met him right away, and but he seemed disinterested in the station, <laughs> and he seemed disinterested in me. And I, I remember <laughs> Chuck going, "Oh, that's the owner. He's don't worry about him. He's never around." Right. So one weekend I was on the air, and I think somebody was broadcasting live from the airfare. And he came in, he started tinkering around with the track lighting in the studio. <laughs> and at that time, for some reason, we had two engineers. And one of them, uh, this guy named Mike. Mike um, St. Cyr? Yeah. No, it wasn't Mike St. Oh, Cyr. Okay. It was this guy, he was kind of an alcoholic, I think. Yeah. He was drunk when he was there. And he came in yeah. and started bitching at Bob. Yeah, I remember him. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm in the middle of this fight. And in the meantime... A thunderstorm is coming over the airfare, and <laughs> these guys are worried about you know, uh, you know, serious injury, and so they're in my ear about one thing, and these guys are over here arguing about track lighting, <laughs> and the other engineer then comes in and goes, oh, um, I, I'm worried about because I think the antenna took a hit mm. because we, we've gone down to the emergency transmitter, so all this is transpiring at once, and I'm trying to stay on the air. <laughs> And, and Bob was, b believe it or not, Bob was the most civil person in that mix. <laughs> uh, got him and his light bulbs. Unbelievable. How about you, Jeannie? Did, did you have a have a good rich story at all? Uh, no, just about the light bulbs. And one time he had a hanger on his nose, and nobody would tell him he had a hanger dangling <laughs> on his nose. I'm like, I can't tell him. I'm not, you know, I'm a peon. I'm not going to tell him. It's a tough. It's a, it's a tough decision. You know, you do you or don't you, right? Yeah. How did he have a hanger hanging on, the light on his bulbs nose? And free popcorn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember the popcorn. There used to be bags and bags of popcorn. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. You bring it to like the Christmas party. There'd be a giant bag of popcorn. Do you guys remember? And I don't know if you guys were there. They had a Christmas party at the. the I think it was the Kirby. We had like a back room at the Kirby. Yeah. 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 And he was there, and he would come just for a few minutes, and we'd get him a gift, and then he'd leave. Yes. So, but that was back when I was drinking really, really heavy. So, <laughs> so I'm there, and I'm I'm hammered beyond belief, and and uh, and uh, so I run out back, and I'm barfing into a garbage can. <laughs> He comes out. I don't think we got him a picture frame, and he's holding on to his little Christmas gift. And he looks at me, and he looks up, 
And I'm thinking, oh, oh shit, he's going to say something. And then he just keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> I, was barfing, I think I was barfing into those bushes by the Kirby grill like this. <laughs> I'm sure you're not the first one uh, who's ever. Oh no! You know, I'm not. Probably, probably a plaque in that, in that spot right now with all the all the. Did he ever throw anything of yours away? When because he would come in, you probably weren't even there. You'd be gone for the day. He would he would come in and throw away anything that was uh, if it was not over six down, months yeah. old, he'd throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd he'd always ask questions too, like, uh, uh, what what is this doing here? I'm like, that's the that's the commercial log. <laughs> what do you mean with? Yeah. What do you mean with right. it? What's right. that for? Uh, I'm like, it's to keep track of commercials. <laughs> All right, to check that kid. Absolutely. Uh, I need to know what's going on with this. Yes. Uh, uh, check that. Right. Right. Yeah. Check. <laughs> That's good. That's I a told, good impression. I told Oscar that uh, he came in. You know, in the production studio there, it was that whole wall of dubs, and we had them kind of all numbered. Lisa uh, Snell and I had this system rigged up so that when a dub came in, she would write kind of a number on the side of it, and then I would just sort of stack them, and they would, you know, when we got to the when it was completely full, then we would just start sort of start at the top, and so we kind of had an ongoing library there and he came in one day it was the first time he came in and he asked me a question and of course i answered it wrong he goes like how long a uh, kid uh, how long have these been uh, been up here and i go like, well you know some are kind of new and and, and some are you know we may have had for maybe a, a couple of years because they're jingle packages and things like that he's like anything in there that's over six months uh, old uh, well yeah i would say probably half of that stuff is all right uh, grab a garbage can kid we're getting rid of all these things and he threw away almost all the dubs and then he left, and then I went out into the dumpster and got them all back, and then had to put them, put them. It, that was a whole day just trying to get those things back into the wall in numerical order. But he would throw away everything, everything. So then you had to lie. The next time he showed up, you just like, no, that's all. Uh, uh, all of those have only been here for a week, Bob. All, only a week. All of them. It all two thousand. All two thousand of these things have been here for a whole week. <laughs> yeah, there's like a big, tr like a big truck showed up, and they just unloaded all of them. It's all the commercials that we're going to run, you know. So, oh, when, right, when okay. you started pulling them off to throw them away, you didn't say anything to them, or just well, fear of Bob, or what? Kind of, like, kind of like what Jeannie said. I mean. He was the guy. I mean, yeah, he was. Yeah. He you, was I Bob. Like I, he didn't make you feel like a peon, but you just realized you thought that maybe yeah. you ought to. You know, like you didn't. You've, I've never rubbed elbows with a guy that high up the food chain in any organization I've ever worked with. So I, I had yeah. no idea how to act. I just figured whatever he said is what would happen. That's you just did what he said. Yeah. I can I agree. tell you, he's the, he was the only radio station owner I've ever talked to. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Yeah, absolutely. None of my other jobs did I ever have, you know, any kind of. I guess in Tijuana, we I met him, but that was about it. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like he didn't come <laughs> in and interact with us.